All right, now we're ready to tuck the neutrals back into the box and out of the way. Okay, now we deal with our hot conductors. Here's my power in and the hot wire of the power cable in and power out. As you see now, they're on the left side, so I don't even have to guess when I look at this box. I know that my powers are on the left, my switch legs are on the right. So this is switch position number one. We're going to leave that because that's going to get connected to the top screw of switch number one, as is this one going to get connected to the top screw of switch number two. So tuck them out of the way. Now I need to make a pigtail splice here because I have to have power going in and out continuous as well as I have to have a jumper out to switch number one and out to switch number two. So again, we strip these four wires, the two pigtails and the power in and out. Now these I can shorten up a little bit because I don't need to get access to that splice again once it's made, so we'll cut them off about there. Sticking out of the box about four inches. Again, stripping about three quarters of an inch of the insulation. And on my pigtails. Okay. Now working at this a little bit awkwardly just so that I make sure that there's a good good picture on the camera here. Okay, so all my four wires lined up, the ends relatively even. And make my splice. Twist them together. have a nice even twist. You don't want one rolling on top of the others. Cut them even. So cut the wires off all nice and evenly. See that they're all twisted together. Nothing's wrapped on top of each other. Nice smooth splice. Time to install the wire nut on this splice. Okay, again I can tuck the splice into the back of the box. And when it comes time for finishing, I know exactly what to do. Here's the hot wire for the bottom of switch one, the switched wire for switch two, for switch one I should say, and the ground. So I'll put those all together and just kind of roll them into the box, turn it sideways so you can see it better. And switch position two, I've got my hot, my switched wire going up the light along with the ground for that screw or for that switch and I just roll them into the box like that. Now here's where I'll, I'll explain why I like to leave this loop up here. Just gonna move the camera up a little bit. You can see that little safety loop I've got up there. A lot of times a drywaller or a wallboard installer like to use a zip tool or a roto bit tool and if you don't have this flange here they'll just push the drywall onto the face of this give it a bump and they can see the line then they run a roto zip tool across around the box well, lots of times they'll either nick a wire in here with that tool or worst case scenario I've seen them use a keyhole saw and cut the box out and they'll nick your wires well now if that does happen You've got some expansion here that you can pull down a new bit of cable and restrip it and you don't have to replace the whole run. So here you see that's ready for finishing. Once the wall board's on all you have to do is come in here put your finger in and that's the reason I don't don't uh, strip and curl the wires at this point because if you put your finger in here to pull these out if you had a hook on the end of that wire it could rip your fingers.